In case you haven't noticed, Joe Biden is finally starting to slide in the polls, thank God. And the reason why he's sliding, and the reason why just overall he hasn't had the best week, week and a half, is because he can't stop putting his foot in his mouth. Again, and again, and again, he says or does something that's either wrong or so bizarre that you can't help but not like him. And this is precisely why he's starting to slip, and it's what we all predicted in indie media would happen. Now, let me give you a couple of examples to demonstrate what I mean here. So, when a pro-choice activist asked him about his wishy-washiness with regard to the Hyde Amendment, he condescendingly then proceeded to wag his finger in her face and said, nobody has spoken about it, done more, or changed more than I have. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Oh my God! He then told a room of 100 elites in New York that they don't have to really worry too much about their taxes being raised because Joe Biden isn't about wanting to demonize people who make money. In fact, they really don't have to worry about his tax policy being too burdensome. He then reached out to a Trump-supporting billionaire Republican Party donor for money and then was subsequently rejected. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of all of that, he just dropped this gem on us. So as Isaac Stanley Becker of the Washington Post reports, Joe Biden wistfully recalled on Tuesday an era in which he was able to get along with segregationist senators even when they didn't agree on much of anything, dismissing criticism from his party's left-wing flank that he is too conciliatory toward political adversaries, the former vice president told a crowd of about 100 people gathered for a fundraiser at the Carlisle Hotel in New York that one of his strengths was bringing people together. He knew this made him old-fashioned in the eyes of restive Democrats, he said, but he remained adamant that political fellowship of the sort he maintained with white supremacists in the 90s 1970s was not just possible in today's climate, but the best answer to the forces elevating President Trump. Quote, if we can't reach a consensus in our system, what happens? Biden said at the fundraiser, according to a poll report. So understand the context that he is talking about when it comes to bipartisanship. His view of bipartisanship is so broad that he literally believes that people of color should come together and work with white supremacists, literal white supremacists, self-proclaimed white supremacists. That's his view of bipartisanship. The problem, Joe, is how do you bring people together who are diametrically opposed? How do you have the audacity to ask black Americans and people of color in general to work with people who are opposed to them, who deny their humanity? Are you seriously asking them or telling them that that's what they need to do right now? I mean, think of how privileged you sound. No, we don't need to work with white supremacists. What we need to do is defeat them. There absolutely needs to be a rainbow coalition where we bring together working class voters, but we don't need to include white supremacists and alt-right assholes in that category. They need to be defeated. They need to lose. That's the only way that we can go forward. And if you don't realize that, Joe, then you're even more out of touch than I previously thought. But he's not done here because this article is going to talk about how he goes on to discuss white supremacists who he worked with, including James Eastland and Herman Talmadge. Now, Herman Talmadge, for those of you who don't know, was a vocal opponent to the civil rights movement. He was also in favor of segregation. And when it comes to James Eastwood, he was arguably even worse, if you could even imagine, because during World War II, he was so opposed to black soldiers serving in the military and fighting the Nazis that he actually did his own Hitler-esque speech where he denounced black soldiers and said that they can't possibly participate or they shouldn't participate because he claimed that they were physically and mentally incapable of serving. He was also unsurprisingly opposed to the Civil Rights Act and the Civil Rights Movement, claimed that the 1964 Civil Rights Act was unconstitutional. He was against Brown v. Board of Education. I mean, the list goes on. These are bad people. Very bad people. And if you're talking about these people, or you knew these people, then you should never bring up their names unless you talk about how you challenged them and shamed them for their 
disgusting, dehumanizing, racist beliefs. That's not what Joe Biden does here. Quote, I was in a caucus with James Eastland, Biden said, at the fundraiser, where he was introduced by Eric Meindich, an investment manager and former Goldman Sachs partner. The Democratic presidential candidate, who has led his competitors in early polls of the crowded nominating contest, briefly imitated the southern drawl of the Mississippi cotton planter, lawyer, and lawmaker. He never called me boy, Biden said. He always called me son. Biden's campaign didn't immediately return a request for comment about why it would be notable that the Dixiecrat, who thought black Americans belonged to an inferior race and warned that integration would cause the, quote, mongrelization, didn't call Biden boy, a racial epithet deployed against black men. He pressed his case at the fundraiser Tuesday, using the examples of Eastland and Talmadge to argue that gaping differences can be accommodated. He said he could work with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell without being best buddies because he knows how to demonstrate respect for Republicans. Even with Talmadge, one of the meanest guys I ever knew, Biden noted, at least there was some civility. We got things done. We we didn't agree on much of anything. We got things done. That sort of pragmatism, he suggested, was rooted in personal affability, and he lamented its demise in today's bitter partisan warfare. But today, you look at the other side, and you're the enemy, Biden said. Not the opposition, the enemy. We don't talk to each other anymore. Maybe it's because one side has gone completely off the rails, Joe. The Republican Party is so extreme that they are literally not just blocking progress that we've made towards tackling climate change, but they are undoing whatever progress that we've made. They're literally facilitating the demise of humanity. So forgive us for not wanting to talk to them or work with them. And he talks about here, oh, well, you know, James Eastland, he never called me boy. He called me son. I mean, what a tone-deaf statement. Of course he didn't call you that, Joe, because you're white. He doesn't think you're inferior. He doesn't view you as someone who isn't equal to him. The reason why he called black men boys was because he thinks that they are an inferior race. So for him to say, oh, well, he was respectful to me because he called me son and didn't call me boy. I mean, I'm baffled. I'm baffled that he would actually say something like this. What a fucking moron. Now, because his comments were so stupid, this led to almost universal condemnation, even from his Democratic Party rivals. Cory Booker called on him to apologize for the comments. Bernie Sanders also agreed that he should apologize. Kamala Harris said that the comments he made deeply concern her. Even John Delaney made a tweet denouncing Joe Biden. If John Delaney thinks that you've gone too far to the right, you've gone a little bit too far to the right, Joe. Now, in case you disagree with him, which most people on the left do, well, here's what he has to say for you. If you don't want to work with the other side, this is his response. We have to work together. The fact of the matter is if we can't get a consensus, nothing happens except the abuse of power by the executive. Zero. Got to make it clear to Republicans that you understand on some things there is a rationale for compromise. And so, folks, look, if you start off with the notion there's nothing you can do, well, why don't you all go home then, man? Or let's start a real physical revolution if you're talking about it. So that was a clip taken from his appearance at the Poor People's Campaign. Just the way that he talks to people, like, I'm not a fan of Joy Reid, but I felt cringe for her at the way he was talking to her. That was just weird. Joe Biden, he can't win. Because if he wins, this dingbat is going to end up losing to Donald Trump. So if you are a Democratic Party voter and you're supporting him, Think seriously about your decision 